it's exactly what I'm doing here today. You know, the, the reminders that I'm sharing with you today are things that I've learned along the way from other folks. So I get to kind of reshare them with you in a way that has, has resonated or helped me. Hey, welcome back, everyone. My name is Tanner O'Brien. I am the founder and CEO of Benefic Marketing. I'm a senior partner within Action Coach of Central Texas, and I just genuinely love working on marketing and finance and different operational things when it comes to business. Uh, business is just one of those things I find so much fun to kind of figure out how to play the game and learn so many things along the way. So part of that process is I like to distill down the lessons that I've learned along the way and some different things that I'm testing and working on in my own actual business and like to, to share some of that with you here today. So we are on the topic of content. So if you haven't seen many of my videos from the last couple of weeks, I totally recommend that you go and check out the channel, watch through all of these as we continue to develop this process of marketing and getting better at it in each of our own businesses. Today, I want to take you through the seven reminders that I use when creating content. So when it comes to creating good content for business, there's a lot of areas that we can focus on and it can be quite overwhelming. So to get right down to it, the best content is the content that is authentic to who you and your business are and is the easiest to stay consistent with. So over the years, I've picked up a number of best practices from great content creators out there, primarily as it relates to business content, and I wanted to share them with you today. So here are the seven reminders that I have found to be most helpful when making content for my business. The first one is document, don't create. So this one's pulled from both Gary Vaynerchuk and Alex Ramosi. It can often be overwhelming to think about creating new content every day or every week, you know, in creation mode, it can take full-time focus or a team of people to consistently find new things and talk about, you know, new types of content and really keep people interested. Often, a more effective way to create content is to simply document what you're already doing. This could be out on a job site, could be a client conversation with permission, of course. It could be snippets from your day, running your business, etc. You know, a spin on the idea of this documentation that I found to be really helpful for me is it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to have someone who follows you around with a camera 24 seven. You know, another often easier way to document is just to do a look back once a week about the and, and talk about the things that you did or the lessons that you learned or a challenge that you or your business had to overcome during that time frame. This works well for those in a professional services business where the, you know, on the job tasks are kind of quite boring to the outside viewer. Sometimes our lives just really aren't that exciting, but the things that we go through and the things that we learn about and have to experience and overcome often are. So being able to just take a step back and, and share that. The second one then is forget creating, become a curator. So to provide value to your audience, the information that you provide doesn't always have to come from you. Oftentimes, if you or your team are deep into an industry and finding relevant articles, blogs, videos, et cetera, on a specific topic, share it with your audience. This provides credibility for you and your business and for your industry and shows that, you know, it shows to your audience that you are the place to go as kind of a thought leader on this particular topic. You can even really post other people's content and provide your own perspective and spin on it. Um, you could highlight key points that really resonated with you the most. I love this strategy because it allows me to continue to learn and grow as a person and provide value to those who follow me or my business. Um, you know, as an example of this, it's exactly what I'm doing here today. You know, the, the reminders that I'm sharing with you today are things that I've learned along the way from other folks. So I get to kind of reshare them with you in a way that has, has resonated or helped me. The third, the third big reminder then is how I versus how to. This was a fun one for me to learn. The simple change from here's how to, or worse yet, here's how you should, to here's how I has completely changed the way that I look at content. Rather than expressing how others should do something, which tends to be met with a bit of a defensive response, focus on telling others what has worked for you or worked for your business. Then we can take a moment, uh, or when we take that moment to share our experience and what has worked well for us, we're often met with a much better response. You know, the audience is less defensive because we're not imposing our beliefs and what we think on them, rather they're, we're just inviting them to experience what we have and allow them to make their own decision. It's been much easier to create content in that more authentic way. 
The next one is remind more than teach. This is another one I learned from Alex Ramosi. People often need to be reminded more than they need to be taught something new. Especially in this crazy world of online content, the reality is that most people simply just will not see all of your content. So if you told an audience about a topic last week or last month, tell them again this week. Most of the audience probably didn't even see the post from last week. More often than not, we tend to get tired of hearing our own message over and over again before the audience does. For them, this is just one message that they saw amongst a thousand. Consistently reminding them is one of the best ways to reinforce the message that we want to get across. The next one is puddles and ponds. This one is simple yet powerful. When first starting out, it tends to be best to focus on kind of the small pool that you currently swim in rather than the wide ocean that is the entire world. In other words, create content for those in your community and in your niche. Get really good and then expand out. When we start with a focus on like a broader audience, it can be really easy to get drowned out. Um, you know, a, a very simple example of this is I was talking to a, a, a coffee shop at one point. I'm talking about just talk about being the best in your local market on that street corner in that little teeny tiny community. Become the best coffee shop that everybody in the area can't stop talking about instead of saying I'm the best coffee shop in the world. It creates that credibility and that community focus and then you can start to build upon it and get um, and, and grow further out from there. The next one is repurpose content and this one ties into a few of the items above and it ties back to my post from last week and it's worth repeating repurpose your content rather than spending all of your time focused on creating new content that you need to you know, create, gra just grab a few high performing posts from the last three months, six months, nine months, or even 12 months ago and repost them. Look for some of your best performing content and transform it into another medium. So like as an example, if there's a Instagram reel that did really, really well six months ago, transcribe it and create a written post. Then you can even expand upon it with new thoughts and perspectives that you see today that you didn't back then and create it as a new blog post. Repurposing content is the number one factor that has helped me with the next and last reminder for today, which is volume and consistency. I have found that most businesses severely underestimate the amount of volume required to post on social media today. There are some that I've spoken with that believe it's once a week and that's plenty yet the audience doesn't grow and the lead flow hasn't really increased for others i've encountered they go really hard for a few weeks you know posting daily or even a couple times a day and then they drop off and don't really post for a while both volume and consistency matter remember the remind more than teach section from earlier with the amount of content that individuals consume on a daily basis if your business is posting only once a week, the likelihood that that content is seen and then fully consumed is quite low. Not everyone will see the post that you put out there. So the more valuable pieces of content that we can produce, the better. This is where the repurposing content can come in handy, especially if you don't have a big team, you know, a big media team that can do the work for you. The goal here is simply to find a frequency and a cadence that you can stick to. While volume does matter, consistency matters even more. So when it comes to producing content, find what works best for you and your business. These are just a few reminders that I have learned along the way that have helped me remain consistent and fresh in what I choose to produce. I'd love to see some of the content that y'all are putting out there today, all forms, written, video, all that kind of stuff. So DM me on Instagram at tannerobrien001 or send me an email at benefitmarketing at gmail.com with some of your favorite content. I'll even do my best to drop a comment and share. I'll see you again next week as we dive a little bit deeper into content and start putting all of these marketing pieces together to scale your business and your marketing.